Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much once again for being here with me. Um, this is Mystic Times, and I'm extremely happy and joyous and blissed out to be joined by my dear beloved Pan once again um, from Germany, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And so, well, um, how are you, Pan? Are you doing good? Very good. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm super happy, just like I said just now, um, because uh, I, I feel like with you, I have this, this back and forth that is so, so important in my life. Um, I love the, the kind of topics that I can explore with you. And I also love your perspective and, and what you bring uh, to to soothe the, the mind and the heart. And, <laughs> uh, and like, there's some questions that I, I usually only speak like inside my, my own being, or I'm also lucky to have a, a partner that, that, can, that, can, that can and that likes uh, to explore these subjects with me as well. Uh, and we grow so much together from exploring the spiritual side and, and the, the more uh, the, like the, the reason why we're here and exploring all of that for me is is priceless to to have somebody with me that's that's into all of this and well and now to have the opportunity to speak with you that just like we did last time which was a very beautiful episode a very beautiful conversation which i invite everybody listening to to check it out also um and well, um, is there anything in particular that's that's in your in your in your heart right now that you would like to share? Mm, I have actually nothing to say. I can only respond. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, um, let's just start somewhere somewhere like how's how's things over there? Yeah, uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are in a mass psychosis. <laughs> people are driven by fear. Mm. I mean, the majority. There are some people who can, looks like, luckily, looks like a bigger percentage of people still can stay in their common sense, but more than half are rule behaving very psychotic mm. it's the whole fear story what is delivered by the media and mm. the politics is taking momentum driving the children mad you know when you see little ones running around outside remember outside with mouth masks this is really crazy you know? mm. they, maybe they think it is a game but uh, in the long run, it is harmful for the little bodies that they are having difficulties to breathe, actually. <laughs> mm, I think <laughs> so, yeah. Getting not enough oxygen for mm. a growing body-mind system, as children doctors say, this is crazy. Yeah. Besides the psychological impact that every other human being is now um, a danger. You have to keep distance. Yeah, the conditioning. So, hmm? The conditioning. A the conditioning. A, mm. Yeah, a programming. Mm. So, uh, well, this civilization is uh, came to uh, obviously comes to its end, and uh, we are in a transition. Globally seen especially strong in the Northern Hemisphere. There are the most people. There is the military, economical, and political power. Mm -hmm. So that system is in its end game. It has to go to a transition. It is not sustainable. And every transition is chaos. It's a chaotic time. Mm -hmm. And there will be a new beginning, we just do not know when. It's like an invisible warfare. 
Uh, so the constitutions are restricted, this you only do when there is war, <laughs> uh, under the camouflage of a pandemic. What um, is in not reasonable at all. There is, uh, when you look at the numbers, at the death rate, nothing has changed. It is just in the usual frame. Mm, yeah, that is crazy. There is like no reason to be alarmed. No mm. for, because I mean, if, if people today had been alive or if we were living in something like the Black Plague of, of the, yes. the Middle Ages, that, that, that was something even the, yes. the symptoms that people showed back then. Imagine if mm. that was happening now, <laughs> if we are going crazy with, with just a, another kind of flu, right? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So it's a psychological warfare. Mm. And the solution they offer with um, the cure, yeah, what to say about that, no? Mm. You're, it's completely not working. And we do not know about the effects who come later. People have immediately effects. So it's all just completely crazy. Mm -hmm. So we have to zoom out of that. I mean, you have to, we need to watch it because it's there, it's in the air, you know, it's everywhere more or less visible, he, people react funny, but one has to focus on something more creative, positive, otherwise it's, otherwise it's devastating. Mm. You know what, I'm, I'm, I'm having, sorry to cut you off, but I'm, yeah. I'm having this, like, there's days when I'm like very angry, days when I'm very sad, when I'm very worried, but today, I don't know, for some reason, maybe because I'm, I'm having the opportunity to, to get together with you, I'm in this kind of happy mood and, and I'm, I'm having like, I mean, in, in, with respect to, to, the, to the global situation, I mean, like I'm, I'm like being able to laugh about it. Uh, last night I got together with, with some family that I hadn't seen for some time and we played music and so uh, that, that also helps. And, but I also got the opportunity to see on TV like the TV was on on the background mm. and I, I asked them to, to put it in mute at least because if not, it was like we were all speaking and the TV was also talking. So I asked them to, <laughs> to put the volume off. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I, I got to see like uh, other people, like um, how they are taking this, this situation. And, and uh, I got to, to hear some, some news like that are on the, on the on the mainstream you know from from my family telling me and stuff because i i don't really follow it very much and here the, there's something that's very funny that on on august there's this this nostalgia party that they do on the 24th every year mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a modern tradition that started here in in uruguay and and so uh, there's this law or this I don't know if it's a law, but a kind of a decree that they that they started um, putting in place here in Uruguay a, a few, maybe a couple of months ago, that in order to be able to open dance clubs and bars and stuff mm -hmm. like that, the rule is that there is no dancing. So you can <laughs> you can get together, but you cannot dance. That is literally the case. <laughs> but very interestingly, this this uh, party that they do on the twenty fourth of August for the nostalgia um this is a very successful night you know economically and financially mm -hmm. so many there's many parties all over the the city and the country so uh they told me yesterday that on uh, starting on the 23rd dancing is already is now allowed <laughs> mm -hmm. on the 23rd people can start to dance uh-huh yeah just a yeah. coincidence yeah, uh, the science of a psychosis is that uh, all the acts and measures and rules are completely no more reasonable. Uh, if people in a, if somebody is in a psychotic state, he is not reachable to reason, to logic, nothing. Just act completely crazy, 
It reminds me on an experiment you made with rats. Mm. You, do you bring the, you brought the rats in a situation where they get it, it's uh, hopeless. We will all um, not make it, we may go to die. And then you watch that this animal started to behave completely crazy, absurd, no more reasonable, made all what you did made no more sense. Hmm. And uh, similar is a mass psychosis. It makes simply no more sense. Mm -hmm. And the more confused people get, the more you prepare them for a new order. And I think this is the calculation behind it. You create a completely crazy situation where everybody gets confused. You have chaos, people having real problems money-wise, work-wise, their businesses go down, they are all in fear. And then you come with a new solution. Then everybody takes it. This reminded me on a story what happened in Europe in the Middle Ages. The church became very powerful and made the people completely afraid of hellfire hmm? because they are all sinners. They did not the people were still quite natural and enjoying and being sensual, sexual, and so on, and the church did not like them. So they made that threaten people, this is, you are sinners. And then they described to the people the hellfire, the suffering, you know, you're roasted on the barbecue and all that stuff. And then they had the idea that you can buy yourself out. It was a fundraising. You buy a certificate and then your sins are forgiven and your soul jumps to heaven. Hmm? And then they needed uh, somebody who organizes this, who has, has already an organization. And there was a very rich merchant. I think it was maybe the, even the richest in Europe, but certainly in Germany. He was called Fugger. He had uh, big business all over the country, all over Europe, delivering good salt and stuff what people really needed. So he was super rich. So they approached him and say, okay, can you organize that whole thing because you have an organization? He said, of course I can, what's my cut? So, <laughs> so the church promised him 25% of the income. Mm -hmm. So, okay, done, deal done. So he organized that and he made a big fundraising all over Germany and got a lot of money in. And that guy for selling actually nothing got even more rich. And the hilarious thing came then later when he was close to dying, he was so afraid <laughs> that he now goes to hell because he knew he has cheated people that he started to buy the certificates himself you know? yeah? because he knew that is but if you're exposed to a lie long enough you start to believe it yeah? the propaganda minister of adolf hitler yeah, was joseph goebbels he openly said you just have to repeat a lie long mm. enough loud enough then it becomes a truth and finally the people who invented the lie started to believe it themselves. Hmm. So now we have something similar. People are made so much afraid of going to the hospital, having to the intensive care and so on, that they take the new game changer, as they call it, you know, an injection. Mm. Hmm. Although it proves more and more that it doesn't protect you, but the propaganda goes on. Well, so some things, yeah. Here, uh, another funny, funny thing, another funny fact is that um, after the second, the second one, now yes. people are getting a third one because it's like a, yes. a re a reinforcement or a, a booster a, a booster yeah <laughs> <laughs> because they apparently what i understand is that they took the wrong uh, brand so they have to take a booster from a, a different brand oh they're making a cocktail yeah <laughs> oh my god it's getting yeah yeah they do yeah. such thing yeah okay um this is 
we only can watch it and stay out. Although like uh, in Europe, they're creating now a two class society, mm. the people who took it and the people who did not take it, and they will be blamed for everything. Mm. And that's is also something that repeats in history. You always find a minority to blame and put the anger and the frustration of the population against the smaller mm. amount of people from the same population. Right. How the so this is uh, sorry yeah. to, to cut you off, but how the yeah. the personal um, limitations of, of the psychological mind start to to work and play and reflect on the on the mass. So like we are always projecting uh, guilt onto others because we don't want to recognize our own shadow. And from what you just said, I see this like this this collective shadow and okay, let's find a, an other to, to blame somebody you know. responsible right. for and my I, misery. Mm. <laughs> yeah, in that sense, it's completely at the point. The individual state on the collective scale is monstrous. So every individual what does not take responsibility for his, his, her own state will project it on the circumstances. And now you put this on the collective level, so then it is projected also on a certain minority, on a dangerous illness, on something, on an enemy, on the terrorists, on, on something. It, it's just reflecting the individual state. Of course, at a mass scale, it's quite scary <laughs> and quite dangerous also. But uh, we have to go through that phase and you have to stay as an individual. The only thing where we can change the whole thing is on a metaphysical level. It's invisible. That means if enough people stay on a high frequency, well, just keep their common sense. Do not get caught in the fear and stay centered in, let's say, watching. Mm -hmm. And do not project anything on anybody. Mm -hmm. That can keep the balance. It can even make the shift. And many people on this planet working on creating a parallel society. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the point where I'm very optimistic because the old society is not sustainable when it collapses that there is something new already there where people can learn and see that works much better. Mm -hmm. And on this, we have to work. I mean, it's that old saying, you need to be the change you want to see in the world. You need to be it. So every individual is humanity. In a, in a smaller proportion, but we're all in the web of life. So if many people change, it has an influence at the collective. Yeah. So, if I look into the history after the first and then especially and after the Second World War, the European and uh, many societies changed. It became, was long time peace and relatively freedom, democracy and so on. Mm -hmm. And so, that will also happen after this crisis. We cannot go backwards. It never goes backwards. We are here for evolution and consciousness. And after that crisis, we will see a change to simply say to the better. Mm -hmm. We are in a, it's a like a death birth process. And that's drastic. Yeah, you have fire all over the place. You have uh, countries collapsing. It's the death birth process globally theme. And in the Southern hemisphere, 
you get less of it. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> you're a bit uh, in the back row. <laughs> mm. Yeah, in the northern hemisphere, you're in the front row. They replace mm. the, the most drastic. Like in frost, this is already um, people uh, can uh, a big amount of people uh, banned from the so-called social life. You have to show a test if you're not uh, vaccinated and you have to pay for the test yourself. So you create, France has it, Italy has it, Greece has it, and in Germany they are on the way to create a two-class society. Hmm. And there's all these things that will come to a peak, we just do not know when and how long it takes. And um, then, the, then it will all vanish. This madness will vanish mm. like the dictatorships in Europe after the Second World War. Okay, in Spain, Franco stayed the longest in power, but he also had to die. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, we, we can only wait and see. And in the meantime, keep your spirit up, create networks, connect people who are thinking, feeling the same way, who are on a spiritual path, mm. who are looking for an alternative way of living. Uh, many people are now quite isolated. This is what I also recognize. So the longing for connection, because if you're one or two, you're only one in a certain surrounding, what things different, this is very difficult as an individual to take. You have a lot of social pressure. So our friend circle, we are many, so this is nobody is isolated. Now, we are in the commune living nine people and uh, around it another 12 people in walking distance so we can meet regularly. We can work and play together. And so we have to create networks. It's already great to know that many people are on a different track. What, uh, under, many people understand that we need an evolution of consciousness, what has to happen in the individuals. And even if it's only small groups happening, hmm, consciousness is always more powerful than the unconsciousness. It's like darkness. Darkness is just the absence of light. The darkness can be 1 million years old. You bring a little candle in, it has to leave. Hmm? The evolution of consciousness is the law of the universe. And that's the, the strongest power, the, the only great power in the whole existence. And the egoic unconscious state of mind is not very strong. It can do quite some crazy acts but it never can succeed. It's like, if you see it as, as a consciousness plays chess with the unconsciousness. If you see that picture on a chess board. Yeah. So unconsciousness has seven moves left and then it's chess mat. <laughs> it is always chess mat, but it can prolong that. That's then the difficult phase. Now the forces of unconsciousness uh, can only prolong their domination, their rulership. But they cannot win because they play against universal law. What is possible for humans? Because we have the free will. Mm? We can go with the river and against the river. Mm? The Taoist picture is the empty boat. The empty boat is carried by the river back home where all the waters come to the sea. But we have free will. 
we can buy a Honda motor and go upstream. <laughs> we can go against any natural universal law. Therefore, we have the free will. And we even have to do this. Otherwise, we never understand that this is the mistake. That's the human story. We have to commit these mistakes. We have to be egoistic and suffer for it to understand it's not the circumstances who make us suffer. It's our attitude. We need a fundamental change of attitude from going, putting all our energy outwards and not looking inwards. Because what we are, all the answers, everybody carries, but we do not look there. Well, we look into Google. <laughs> Uh, we look into information. We look into technology. Mm. We are very outward oriented and that comes into existence because we, the human being is a very weak creature. When we are born without the support from outside, we wouldn't make it. We would not be here. So our first matrix is Care, love, security comes from outside. This is a very strong imprint in the human being. And then we never update that. Most of the people never update that. They always want that it comes from the outside. And then we come in such dilemmas that we give away the responsibility to, to some organization, to an organized religion, to a leader, to governments, to a company, whatever. This should take care of us. Hmm? We do not take the responsibility back and therefore you have to look inside. There is this story in India, how to tame an elephant. And that's very interesting because that's is the same way our mind works. You capture a young elephant, a small one. Then you put a big chain around one of his back legs and tie that chain to a strong tree. So the little elephant will struggle and struggle and struggle to get free. And at some point it gives up and accepts that it is imprisoned, that it is no more free. So his brain is conditioned. Hmm? And then later on, when he is a grown elephant, and I have seen that, I remember that, they put a little rope, just a rope, a normal rope, maybe one or two inch thick, around his le back leg and tie this with a simple loop on a branch. And I saw elephants standing there and they do not walk away. This is just one move and he would be free. But his brain is so strongly conditioned, he feels something on his leg and he still believes he's on the chain. And that's how we are conditioned. We never, very few people, I hope more soon, <laughs> do a checkup again. I am still in need. Do I still need somebody to care and love for me? Or I can do this myself. And on top of it, I can share care and love. So if I can give it, oh, wait a minute, and I do not need it. If I would not, if it would not be in me, how can I give it? But once you believe, like the little elephant, you never do a reality check. We believe we still depend. And then a handful of people can rule millions because the all conditioned, they still feel the old chain, what is now no more there. Hmm? And people who successfully on a bigger scale put that all, this information onto people like what Osho did. Hmm? they become targets of the rulers because nobody who is ruling, who has uh, 
taking an advantage of the invisible chain. <laughs> Once that the people come to know that they're actually free beings. Then once you come to know that, the whole consuming attitude changes. What do you need? Cons the consuming attitude is because people are disappointed, frustrated, need distraction. Mm -hmm. And as long as they can consume, they can ignore their inner misery, their inner, in that sense, negative emptiness. You fill it with goods. Hmm? And then we come in another risky war zone or in, other, in another risky waters. When this consuming is not possible anymore, the misery comes up. Hmm? And then it becomes, creates a very explosive situation. People become more and more violent because they cannot get their distractions anymore. As long as the TV is running and you can get distracted, the masses are calm. It's like in the old Roman times, give them bread and games. <laughs> so actually, there is a change in people, but on the big scale, we're in the same mindset. Mm. And that comes to its end. It cannot work anymore. Uh, the future is not in a more and more and more and more advanced technology. Mm. That won't work. Uh, the future is going inside in recognizing that uh, our simplicity, that we need to tune in to the laws of nature, what follows simply the law of universe. And in that sense, we do not know how many people are on that track because um, that's not in the mainstream news. <laughs> yeah. But I have the feeling it's, it's many, and they also start more and more to connect. Mm -hmm. And we just have to go on to share that. Mm -hmm. That all what you're looking for is inside of you. Mm -hmm. And the crisis, the so-called crisis, what is also real for many people, more and more people here in this country have to go to the social welfare because they lost everything. Their little businesses collapsed, they are bankrupt. Mm -hmm. That also does something that people start to question their attitude because their life as it was is gone. And there is also not much hope that it comes back. At a certain point, you cannot put the clock backwards and it is good like this. No, we cannot go backwards. No, the, everybody who has understood that the human being is created by call it universal information is created for to bring the evolution of consciousness forward, so to say. Mm -hmm. And therefore we are here on this planet. Mm -hmm. Existence experiments with itself. It tries all kinds of things and watching it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's, we are in an evolutionary, evolutionary experiment. Uh, the whole universe is an evolutionary experiment. And from that perspective, some crises, visible or invisible wars on this planet, 
psychotic faces on this planet. It's just half a second in eternity. And then it disappears again. It's part of the play. Hmm. So many civilizations have disappeared. Then the next one appears, creates the same mistakes. Now we just uh, landed on a global scale. And according to many prophecies of the indigenous people, they say, they say it is happened before and you say it happens one time more and that's the fourth time they call it a fourth cleaning and after this there is a shift but that there is a let's say a collective shift that's a big birth pro process there's a big dying and birth process and we are in the middle of it so I only can recommend to everybody who understands this, can feel this, connect with people who are like you, who are also looking for awakening, for something to live what makes sense, for a humanity, a human, life what is more compassionate what is based on trust on conditional love what is based on tolerance on accepting everybody mm? giving everybody space non-violence very important no aggression no fight the, the whole there is nothing worth fighting for on this planet since uh, thousands of years we commit that mistake mm -hmm. that the aggression disappears but as long as many individuals inside of them in a conflict when they are in a civil war inside it will show on the collective level mm -hmm. and so what we observe on the collective level is the mirroring of each individual. Hmm? But there is also one thing I remember Osho said, one enlightened being balances at least 1 million people who are in an unconscious state. So we do not need so many, <laughs> but we need quite a few <laughs> yeah, who resonate on compassion on unconditional love, who really care for this planet and not only the humans, for the whole creation. It's still the paradise. We just have forgotten it in, in our yeah, unconscious state. We are destroying it. Hmm. For example, there is in the Mediterranean, Italy, Greece, and Turkey, there is this year big wildfire. But it is a lot of evidence shows that it is put on intention. Of course, it's very dry there. It's very hot. It had uh, not much rain. They had a drought. But some crazies start a fire there for little individual advantages. Once the forest is gone in this country, then it becomes building site ground. And then some people think that's an advantage for them and burning down huge forests. This madness is unbelievable, but it's running. In Brazil, they're burning down the forest to grow, grow soya beans, to sell it as animal food to Europe. So the whole thing, this old attitude of wanting and wanting and wanting and needing endlessly is completely suicidal. 
And uh, that the masses understand that needs a big bang and we're creating it. Mm -hmm. A big wake up call. Mm -hmm. And humanity works on it. So the evolution of consciousness has, is unavoidable. It cannot be stopped. Many people awaken, but it is, we have to go through that chaotic phases and they are no more local. We are in a globe, in a global, in a global village, so to say. So it happens global. Of course, there are areas who are a little bit away from it. There is less impact. Some areas is big impact, uh, but uh, everybody is in it. We are on a spaceship called Earth, right? <laughs> we are all on the same planet. So it has this effect everywhere. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, big part uh, in the Southern hemisphere of many countries take the US, Canada and Europe as role models. I hope they understand that they have, don't follow them. They already brought it over the top. <laughs> yeah. I would not take this idea that they know how it works because they have technology, they have science, they have money, they have power, that they know what they are doing. They simply do not know. Yeah. But many poorer countries, depend on them. Huh? They are bought, <laughs> huh? they have credits. <laughs> huh? So there is in the middle ages, they had the saying, which bread I eat, their song I sing. Hmm? So that's still working on this planet. The rich countries giving the poor countries credit just to dictate them. Mm -hmm. On that level, one can only hope to wake up and say, wait a minute, we can make it without you. It's maybe less luxury, but at least we are free. Mm -hmm. And luxury never can buy you freedom. It makes you dependent. Mm -hmm. And we all have to learn to share. We all have to learn to care. And we all have to learn to live more simple. Yeah, I saw um, a little clip with Greg Braden, he's quite known. He said he was with a group of people somewhere in Peru doing, going to the sacred places. And had a group of young people who were we are in a complete, complete freak out because their cell phones didn't work there. No receiving, no working. So they were two weeks without this distraction. They could not play with their toy. And they went to almost like chunkies to a withdrawal, to a turkey as they call it. You know? yeah. So the generation, the who grew up with this technology are addicted. Yeah. The way I grew up, my parents had not even a telephone. There was a telephone booth in the village. You had to go there, put a few coins in, and then you could phone with uh, something you had to, to dial with a, with a little uh, disc, you know. This, if you give, uh, put a uh, one of the, young generation in front of such a thing, they freak out. <laughs> they cannot handle that anymore. It's so slow. And then you make a little mistake. You have to start from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So we are formed by our impressions. I grew up very simple on a small farm. I, since I was quite forced to work there, 
was not voluntary. I did not appreciate it, but now I do. <laughs> yeah. And the work with animals and plants brings you in the same state because it reconnects you with nature. And there is this conditioning that uh, to grow your food and to be as, what is the word, self-sustainable is something tough, hard, heavy. That's just the conditioning. My parents saw it like this. But it doesn't mean it is like this. It can be also easy and playful when you get uh, understanding the feeling of it. If you care for nature, nature gives it multifold back. Hmm. We did this year with, um, we have not so much garden place, but um, still enough, worked on the soil, put a lot of natural fertilizer. It's a lot of work, but the harvests are fantastic. Huh? Nature gives it back and you make experience. And next year we will extend that since we can now stay at that place a bit longer to look like we had to leave in a year, but we get three years more now in the moment. So we will take this time that um, yeah, the younger generations learned something very valuable, how to grow your food. Uh, what the crisis can go very far that uh, the supermarkets might be empty or not much anymore. Mm. Yeah, people then at a loss. Yeah. So we, I remember from my mother and my grandmother still old books, how to preserve food. You have to learn this again. What you do when there is no electricity? Hmm? Yeah. There are very simple old ways where you can preserve food, especially in Europe, you have five, six months winter where nothing is growing. Now, all these things need to be learned again, because the way I see it, that's the future for humans. If we're not going backwards for our momentary thinking. This is called backwards, but it's actually forward into a more sustainable, intelligent, harmonious way of living with this planet. Mm -hmm. That we understand the law of, as Lao Tzu called the Tao, mm -hmm. the law of nature. Mm -hmm. 2,800 years ago about he was living in China was already a sophisticated culture. And they made the same mistakes. They did not want to follow the law of nature. Look at China today. It has created environment catastrophe. It has created a dictatorship. It's exploiting the people and they suffer a lot. They have made big experiments with manipulating weather and they're having now uncontrollable floods. Now I looked into that. We have these extreme weather phenomenons, but <clears throat> I did a little research since the end of the second world war. That means 70 years about the making experiments to influence weather. We call it cloud seeding to create rain and do all kinds of camp trails. So that was the latest. But 70 years the experimenting with this, especially the military, to use it as a weapon. Now, seeing all these extreme weather phenomena who happen more and more and in short periods, that gave me the idea maybe. We brought it, we disturbed it so much that it went out of control. And still, it's not stopped. Somewhere in the 60s or the 70s, the UN said, okay, no more weather manipulation for military reasons. But see the cunningness. But for research is allowed. And who does the research? The military. <laughs> yeah. In 
the 50s, the Royal Air Force made an experiment in England uh, to put something, the manipulate clouds, and it worked, but it created the biggest flood in England you ever had. For certain regions, many people died. And then the files disappeared. It wasn't us because it worked, but it worked on the wrong place. <laughs> it hit their own country. <laughs> the files got all soaked up in water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now uh, just uh, recently, since it's so long ago in the 50s, the files were opened again. And they saw the big catastrophe was not the hand of God, as they called it. It was the hand of the Royal Air Force. <laughs> yeah. So such mistakes happened already, but it did not, we, they did not stop to do it. Hmm. So there is a climate change created by manipulating the weather, by the military and other people who have an interest at that. Uh, there is another report I found when Chernobyl happened, a huge radioactive cloud moved towards Moscow in a, captured in a big rain cloud. And it could have rained at Moscow it was clear that it heading there. This you could see with satellites. And then the whole city would have been contaminated. So what did the Air Force do? Their Air Force, they put their planes up, manipulated the clouds, that it rains in what is now called Belarus. It didn't hit Moscow, it just hit another area. So they can do such things. The Chinese, when they do a parade, a military parade, and there it could rain. Then they shoot rockets into the clouds that it rains, not in Beijing, that they can do their parade. Yeah, with certain salts and um, particles, what comes also down again. Yeah, and uh, grow something on salty soil. We are mad. Hmm. And to me, looking in all this, uh, yeah, there is a climate change created, but not by burning fossil fuels. That has actually a minor influence. It has an influence, but not as it is posted or proclaimed. I think this whole weather manipulation since 70 years, what is quite uh, unknown, has disturbed the natural cycles, and now it backfires. But that's how we learn. Hmm? That we first have to create a big mess to understand the mistake. Oh, no, some phone is ringing. <laughs> you take care? Okay. Good. So it's Murphy's Law, no? <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, if it can go wrong, it will. And that's what we are doing. Since we can do it, we do it, but we do it so blindly. And for what? Out of fear? Hmm? Our civilization is based on fear. Otherwise, why we need for military reasons to manipulate the weather, to create bio weapons and the whole weapon industry, for what? Who is threatening us? our own unconscious. Mm. Hmm? Uh, why we are so violent? What did we do in 10,000 years of civilization? For fighting wars, putting so much energy into destruction. And then after wars, when the weapon industry uh, is not needed anymore, we just put it to into civil service. First, you need to create an atom bomb, you need an atomic plant, otherwise you cannot do it. The atomic plants were not made to make electricity. They were needed to create an atom bomb. And then they had enough atom bombs and then what we do with that stuff? Ah, we make electricity. 
But if something is invented for destruction, even if you change it then for something else, the thank you. The basic information stays, it's destructive. Mm. The atomic waste, what is left from our atomic plants for thousands and thousands of years, it's life-threatening, at least for human life. Mm. Yeah, mice and rats live too short to develop the cancer and many animals, but humans. The chemical industry came into existence in Europe to the First World War for chemical warfare, gas granites. After that, you were, what we do now with that industry was changed into producing fertilizer and make the farmers believe, you know, this is working much better. Buy that stuff, put it on your fields. Now we know that that poisoned the food chain. Hmm. So many of our industries were first created for war. Hmm. And then since there was no, no demand, was not a big war, hmm. then it was converted into something you it's called for peaceful reasons for civil service but remember when it was based on destruction that's an information the information has not changed hmm? it stays to a certain extent destructive and this we can see hmm? So we need a complete shift hmm, from aggression to peacefulness. And that has to happen in individuals. Yeah, we are programmed with so much negative self-talk and we believe in it. And then it becomes a reality. Yeah? When you look into your mind, and see all these negative informations towards actually what you call yourself. Don't believe in it, just watch it. If you believe in it, it becomes a reality. Thank you so much, Pan. All, all that you've, you know, you've been saying, um, it can sound sometimes like a little bit scary to, to look at the shadow like you're, like you're doing to point at it and and even bringing up certain uh, historical events where where we're repeating bad choices that we've as a as a, as a collective human um, group that we've been making. Mm, and but at the same time, I think this is a a, a nice place where we're reaching now of 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 looking at what needs to happen for us to stop repeating those same mistakes exactly. and and planting seeds for 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 a, 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 an evolution in consciousness like you speak exactly yeah if we want to learn we have to look at our mistakes <laughs> hmm. the, the worst thing is to hide the mistake then we're repeating it again hmm. If you see it at the individual level, if I can admit I made a mistake, I did not know better, but now I see it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. If I can admit this, show this, share that, I learn everybody else can also learn. You can learn out of other people's mistakes. You do not have to do the same. If you have a certain intelligence means a certain ability to reflect. Mm -hmm. You do not have to do exactly the same. But if you have no ability to reflect, you have to do it the same, in the same way. Yes, we are maturing, we are growing up individually and as a society. And I, I think I once heard that it's, uh, it's very, it's smart to learn from your mistakes, but it's wise to learn from other people's mistakes. And yes, I think that's exactly. that's a great a great saying. Um, so I, I would like to 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 make a pause here, okay, and to to on, on this on this note to finish up the the first hour. And um, we're starting mm -hmm. this this um, 
this new this new way where uh, yeah. we're going to do uh, one hour for 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 public access and we're going to do a second hour for members and the links will be down in the description of the video for for everybody to if you're interested in 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 getting some more and I'm, I'm going to start uploading more conversations uh like this with with a second hour on a on a member's site uh I'm still deciding which one maybe patreon or, or one of those that are that are out there and um so uh, I want to thank everybody that's been here uh for for this time listening to 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 pans to pans sharing uh which which again uh might sound a little bit scary and a little bit uh too deep sometimes because we we'd rather distract ourselves with our phones or with our <laughs> with with comfort uh but really we are at a, a very important place in in the in the recent history of of humanity where we are in in desperate need to to see these things to look at ourselves uh and uh, I think it starts individually to start looking at our own shadows, our own programming. And uh, well, I think maybe in, in this second hour we might we might go into different ways in which people can can look at that. And and I have this this question that I'm I don't know very very much how I can express it. That I, I want to try to to ask you about samsara and the, the cycle of death and rebirth and and what the point of that all is uh, but you've given some hints with with the idea of darkness being being always there uh, as and the way i understood it is that it's like always there kind of as a resistance to to um to bring forth the the need for growth and for evolution right like a, like a background from which evolution yes. can spring so thank you again everybody thank you pan We'll take a short break and we can we can uh, meet back in a few minutes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everybody. See you on the members hour. Bye.